Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. In this tutorial, we're recreating both Rhythmizer and Autoplay in Bitwig using the new Node Grid device that was introduced in Bitwig version 4.2. Now, you might ask me, but hey Oli, you've already made this tutorial on how amazing Bitwig's ARP is and how flexible it is and how it can basically do all the bells and whistles or almost all the bells and whistles rhythmizer and autoplay can do. That's true, but first off, this tutorial is an introduction to how awesome Note Grid is and how the whole grid devices concept is awesome in Bitwig. Second of all, I've realized that Bitwig's ARP has this really weird um, behavior with velocity it actually doesn't output the whole velocity range see in velocity we have 128 value from 0 to 127 and let me show you if i'll take the arpeggiator and serum because serum can show us precisely what's going on you'll notice that if i'll let's copy this pattern here and set the velocity to 100 percent you will notice that we don't have the full velocity range being outputted, you know? And let me set the velocity in here to 100%. We still doesn't have the full range. Now for sure we can warp it in here, thanks to Serum, but not all synthesizers can do so. So what I'm going to show you today will fix this problem. And by the way, if you have any fix for the arpeggiator not outputting the whole velocity range, please leave a comment. I didn't find anything. And the last reason why we're doing this, because it's just awesome to create these things from scratch, at least for me. Now, before we dive into this tutorial, if you'd like to support the channel, you can consider becoming one of my patrons or buy my presets on Gumroad or leave a like, comment, subscribe if you're new to the channel. This helps the channel a lot and content like this is posted every week and special content from my Patreon. Now, with that said, let's dive into this tutorial. So here we are in the note grid. Uh, we'll be using a patch from my upcoming Vital Bank. It's coming really soon, so keep an eye on the channel. It sounds like this. It's a sample and hold type of lead, just the what I consider the perfect sounds to create these kind of devices for. So the first thing that we need is to create this uh, random ARP with um, while modulating the gate to have like a random gate. Now, how we can do this? So the R basically is sending gate messages <coughs> to the synthesizer. The gate messages messages are really simple. They're basically 0 and 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1. And the duration of the 1, basically, is the gate's length. How we can do this? I couldn't think of a simpler way than by using, actually, a square LFO. A square LFO in unipolar mode will output 0 and 1, basically. So here's a really simple LFO. I'll set it to 1 and 16th note, like so. I'll set it to square and I'll trigger it with the gate in, just like so. And the output of it will go to the gate output that we have in here. So now check this out. Perfect, we've just created the 1 and 16th ARP note. Now we need to modulate the gate. And to do this, we'll modulate this Q of the LFO in here, just like so. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do to modulate this, I'll use the a random generator module in here. And for this, I'll use the dice. The dice module, every time we'll trigger it, it'll generate a random value. Now, for this, we will mod we will trigger it with the output of our LFO and we will connect it to the LFO's skew in here using the modulator out module. So this basically will help us connect this output, which is kind of on a canaro, 
to the LFO skew in here. I'll set the skew to 0%, but you can choose whatever value you want. And let's modulate it to the max. So now we have this. Perfect. Now we need the random velocity output. Now for this, it's pretty simple. Let's take a random generator for this. I'll use a sample and hold LFO, but you can use really whatever you like. The sample and hold LFO would be triggered by the gate in here. And I'll set it to 1 16th note. Also, I'll set the modulation here to fully stepped. And I'm going to connect it to the velocity output in here and I'll set it to 100%. And now we basically have random velocity output. We're done with the 1 16th note. Now let's add our 1 8th note output and start having some fun with this. So for this, I'm going to use an LFO too. So let's take an LFO. Now I won't duplicate this one because duplicating it will duplicate also the modulation and I don't want to duplicate the modulation because this modulation is 1 and 16th modulation and in here since it's going to be 1 and 8 I want 1 and 8th modulation basically gate modulation so I'll do the same thing I'll set it to square I'm going to gate it with the gate input that we have in here but I'll need a new dice module that it's going to be triggered by this LFO and a new modulator out. Connect them together and this one will modulate the 1 and 8th gate just like so. And I'll set it to 8th note. Now let's connect the output of this LFO to our gate output and now we have perfect now to make things simple for this tutorial I'm going to keep the main output as 1 and 16th and I'm going to introduce some 1 and 8th notes in between these 1 and 16th notes so to do so it's pretty simple we're going to use a module called the select module. So the select module has two inputs, one output and one trigger input. When you trigger the select module, it's going to switch to the second input. Pretty simple, let me show you. Here's the first input, here's the second input, output, and if I'll take a button, and I'll make it, and I'll route it to the trigger in here, check what will happen when I'll click on it. Pretty awesome. Now, how we can like automate this uh, movement while adding a, a chance percentage to it? Pretty simple. We have a chance module in here. So this chance module will be triggered by the 1 and 8th LFO because we need the chance of the 1 and 8th being introduced not the 1 and 16th so I'm going to trigger it with the 1 and 8th LFO and depending on these triggers that it's going to receive from the 1 and 8th LFO and according to the chance number that we have in here or trans value that we have in here it's going to output the trigger so now when it's on zero nothing will happen but if i'll add a value of let's say 26 27 percent check this out Pretty nice. So we can add for sure more, let's say 70%. Pretty awesome. And we can now modulate this with a macro. Let's add a macro in here. And this macro would control the chance of how much one and eighth we have. 
perfect. Now, let's introduce some one and eighth in here. So next, what we're going to add is a really interesting feature that, I, that we have in both Rhythmizer and Autoplay, which is the note probability. Now, to add the note probability, we have to figure out a way to basically have a gate that would close our output from time to time according to another chance module. Now, luckily, we have just the right module for that. If we go to the logic tab in here, we have the XOR module. Basically, what it will do, it's a logic gate seeking only one input to be true. Basically, when both inputs receive a signal, it's going to close. So if, if I'll take it in here and I'll set it to the output of the select module in here, check this out, we only have one input. It's outputting everything. Now we'll introduce something in the second input that will close it. And as I said, it's going to be another chance module. Now, let's take another chance module. So this chance module in here will be triggered by our main output because this is, you know, we want to base the chance upon it. So let's take a cable and route it in here, and it's going to be routed to the second input. So basically on 0%, everything will flow. 100% nothing will flow. And, you know, if we'll add, for example, it's 20%, 21%. we got our node probability. Now again, let's add a macro to control this. I'll set this to 0% and I'll route this macro in here to fully close it. And now this is node probability. So basically on 0%, it's going to be fully opened and, and on 100%, it's dead. Perfect. And uh, yeah, isn't this just awesome? We've just created a really simple version of both Autoplay and Rhythmizer, having the what I consider the most important features of these devices in the note grid. Now, remember, this tutorial is an introduction to how to the node grid and how awesome it is and what it's capable of doing. For sure, we can add way more functionalities. But as I said, I kept things to the bare minimum. Now, for sure, before we end this tutorial, if you'd like me to add more features, you can leave a comment below. But with this, this is the end of this tutorial. I really hope you've liked it. I really hope you've learned something new. See you next time.